Good morning, everybody. Eddie Paul. You can see the furniture is gone. We're moving. <laughs> Joshua is at the other house taking care of Gail. So I'm here at the other house by myself just to record this video because we've spent three days moving three truckloads, one truckload each day, or not a full truck, but it's taken us three days to, anyway. But we're coming back to get the smaller things out of the closet and all that. You know what it's like to move. But anyway, we're moving. But I didn't want to neglect you. Our church without walls. So the pastors here today brought my Bible. I hope you've got your Bible. You need your Bible. You need to know what's in this book. There's a day coming. You're going to wish you had. And the Lord might look at you and say, well, you had all these years and you didn't pick it up. You didn't read it. You got nobody to blame but yourself. The Bible goes so far as to say, his people perish for a lack of knowledge. You want to know what's in the heart of God? Read the Bible. So today I'm going to share with you what he has laid on my heart to share. Some of you may scratch your head and say, what was that? For some, it's going to be the word you've waited for. So I pray today, as you listen to this message, you will hear from him concerning you and or your family. So today, turn with me, please. If I can find my place, I left my marker at the other house or somewhere. Turn with me today to Acts chapter 8. Matt and I have the same uh, numbers. Mine's on page 1486 in, in my Bible, King James, Zondervan Publishers. But I want to speak to you today concerning Acts chapter 8 as the Lord has laid it on my heart. So again, follow with me in your Bible. Acts chapter 8, start reading in verse 1. Now, we're going to start out with Saul of Tarsus, so don't be surprised. Later, he will become the Apostle Paul, but right now, in Acts 8, he's still Saul of Tarsus, so you'll understand where I'm reading. And Saul was consenting unto his death, talking about Stephen. You remember the um, deacon who was stoned for his ministry, and the Bible tells you that Paul later, who started out Saul of Tarsus, consented. He gave his approval to the death of Stephen. No wonder people were afraid of him. So I'll read on Acts chapter 8 and verse 1. And Saul was consenting unto Stephen's death. And at that time, there was great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the, the apostles. They didn't run. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, later to become the Apostle Paul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing men and women, committed them to prison. Saul of Tarsus went house to house, arresting Christians because they were Christians. Some were put in jail. Some were put to death. That's who the Apostle Paul was before Jesus got a hold of him. So mom and dad don't give up on that son or daughter. Today, 
They may be in jail. Today, they may be going to jail, just got out of jail. Don't stop praying, Mom, Dad. Jesus may yet get a hold of them. Back to Acts chapter 8, verse 4. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Not denominational structure. They preached the word, as Paul told Timothy. Preached the word. Verse 5. Then Philip, one of the apostles, went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Now that signifies an apostle, and you and I both have met men and people who claim to be apostles, but they're not. It's just a title, because according to the Bible, when you're elevated to the position of apostles, you are given the anointing, the power of God to heal the sick, cast out devils, and raise the dead, and that's not every believer has that. Oh, I get admonished from time to time from narrow-minded people, and they say, well, if you were where you ought to be, you could heal Gail, or you could do this. Or you... Oh, hush. Not everybody is given the power or the ability to heal just because you're a believer. I'm going to get into that in just a little bit, so don't hang up. Bear with me. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them, and the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Pete, Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles. If a man of God is an apostle, he's going to do the works of God, as the Bible says, that men may look upon the works, see the works, and glorify God. That's what it's for. To glorify God. It is not to make the preacher more money. Now try not to chase that rabbit trail today. Seven. For the unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. Now, let me ask you a question right here on verse 7. If in that day many were filled with demons, were possessed, what do you think about today? Wow. Some people that are uh, schizophrenic or they're psychologically messed up, could be, I'm not saying they all are, I'm just saying some of them could be possessed of demons. That's why they have two personalities, two or more voices, and they can be one thing today and somebody else tomorrow. That's because they are possessed. And a doctor can't cast the devil out. Unless that doctor is also an apostle of God. But Philip did these things, and the people were amazed. Listen in verse 8. And there was great joy in that city. People were being healed and delivered. Lame people were walking. Demon-possessed people were set free. It was something else. Philip did this. But, listen, verse 9. We're going to get into the truth now. Verse 9, Acts chapter 8 and verse 9. But, now, Philip's in Samaria. He's preaching. He's healing people. He's performing miracles. But, verse 9. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery. Are you listening? Simon was in Samaria and he did wonders, but he was using sorcery 
and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. Do I need to tell you today that there are preachers out there proclaiming themselves to be great and it looks like they're healing people. At least many of those people fall down when the preacher touches them, waves at them, blows on them, and they fall down. Could that preacher be like Simon using sorcery? Do you not know that the devil has power? Do you not read your Bible that Satan told Jesus, I have the power to give you the kingdoms of the world. And Jesus turned him down. I'm telling you today, there are people out there today who are doing miracles, it looks like. Wonders, it looks like. People are being touched and changed, but they're using sorcery. And the people are deceived and bewitched. The preacher's just making a name and lots of money. Now, according to this Simon feller, to whom they all gave heed in verse 10, from the least to the greatest, saying, the people were deceived, saying, this man is the great power of God. Well, that could be true. Have you ever stopped to think? The Bible says that Satan is the God of this world. Which God? They thought him to be the power of God. And some today are, but it's not my God. It's their God. It's a false God. It's a man-made God. The God of this world who is Lucifer, Satan, or simply known by many as the devil. It just fascinates me how that some people say they don't believe in Jesus. They don't believe in the devil. How could you not? Dum, 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 dum. But the people were what were bewitched by what the man did. But the people in Samaria in verse 12, thank God for the word, but when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, listen, they were baptized, both men and women. They believed. Philip's preaching and they were baptized. Look at verse 13. Here it is. Verse 13. Acts 8 and 13. Then Simon himself. Listen to this. Simon himself <laughs> believed also. The sorcerer believed have you not read in James chapter 2 and verse 19? Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. I'm telling you today, some people out there claim to be believers and they're devils too. They believe and they're devils. They're not serving your God, my God. They're serving their own God, a false God, a man-made God. <laughs> no wonder the church world is in such a mess. Many of the churches today, in buildings they call churches, the people are bewitched by the leaders who are following a God that's not the God of Abraham, Isaac, nor Jacob. He's not Jehovah Jireh or Jehovah Rapha. He's the world's God. His name is Satan. His name is Lucifer. And there's coming a day he will be no more. There will be but one God, the holy God, our God. Praise God. Hallelujah forevermore. Wake up, people. Wake up. If the Bible says that devils can believe and tremble, and the Bible shares about Simon, who was a sorcerer, who believed 
and was baptized. I'm telling you, there's some devils out there. They've joined your church. They're sitting on the platform. You may have one of them as a pastor, one of them as a minister of music. You may have one of them or several of them on the deacon boards, and they got the church by the britches, so to speak, and it ain't the Holy Ghost. It ain't of God. Not our God, Jehovah God, Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Wake up! Wake up! You'd be surprised at the people who write me and tell me of the turmoil in their churches. No wonder. The buildings that they attend and go to, they call the church, is not the church. Read your Bible. The church is not a building. The church is the people. And as it was in the book of Acts and in the Bible, they went from house to house preaching the gospel. They didn't say, come over here and I'll tell you. They went where the people were. And that's what the Holy Spirit is doing today. He's coming. <laughs> He's coming where you are, in your home, in your car, at work, wherever you are. God is reaching out for you, trying to rescue the perishing, care for the dying. The Bible says God delighteth not in the death of the wicked. He don't want you to go to hell. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. <laughs> what more does God have to do to convince you that there is but one God and he is holy. Holy means there's not a spot nor blemish in him, not a problem. He is holy. He is above everything. He's above everybody. You know, the more technology we have, the bigger space becomes. And the Bible says that God can span the heavens between his thumb and his finger. God, you've heard the song years ago. They don't sing it anymore. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hand. Yeah, the Bible says that God can span the heaven from his thumb to his finger. That's what a God we serve. He's reaching out to you today. He's trying to get you to do what it says. And I believe it's second Chronicles seven and 14 or Chronicles seven and 14. If my people, he said, if my people, <laughs> if my people will humble themselves and pray, and turn from their wicked ways. God's people turn from their wicked ways. He said, then. See, there's a lot of people praying, but they ain't turning. They keep doing what they've been doing because they're sowing to their flesh. But Jesus said it. You've heard me and I'll say it again and again. He that is not willing to deny, deny himself, take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Until you discipline yourself and tell yourself, no, you're not worthy of Jesus. You've got to die to self. Do what he wants, not what you want, and definitely not what everybody else wants of you. God didn't ordain you to please your family. God didn't ordain you to please your employer. God didn't ordain you to please your neighbors.
This Simon was a sorcerer. He believed also, listen, Acts chapter 8 and verse 13, the Bible tells you about Simon. It could be your name. Then Simon himself believed also, listen, and when he was baptized, he believed and was baptized, as in many of these churches today, they call a church, they take in members, they stand in front of the church and say, I believe, and they get baptized next Sunday, and they're no different than Simon. They're bewitched, sorcerers, sinners, and they didn't get saved just because they got they believed and got baptized. And Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs, uh, miracles and signs, hear me, the apostle performed miracles and signs, and if you call yourself an apostle and you can't do miracles or signs, shut up, hush! Stop lying to people. I've met preachers that call themselves apostles and they're just full of their self. They're not full of the Holy Ghost. And just because somebody falls down don't mean it was the power of God. But they believed Philip, Simon did because of the signs and miracles which were done. Now listen, verse 14. I've only got a few verses. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, listen, who, when they were come down, prayed for them, the people of Samaria, that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Listen. For as yet it was fallen upon none of them. So tell me some of you narrow-minded church-going people, how come you think because you think you got saved, you got full of the Holy Ghost and the Bible right here says people believed and were baptized, but none of them had received the baptism in the Holy Ghost. That comes to when the vessel is clean. Simon got believed and baptized, but was still not clean. Too many people today in the buildings they call the church, they're believers. They've been baptized, but they are not clean because they're still full of the world. They're full of themselves. And they think because they're deceived that they also will go to heaven. And no, sir, no, ma'am, they are on their way to hell. Peter and John came and began to pray for the people, for the Holy Ghost, because it had yet not fallen on any of them. Because, listen, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Eddie Paul was saved and sanctified a while before I was baptized in the Holy Ghost. Some of you claim you got it all and you don't. That's why you're so miserable. That's why God cannot manifest his works in you. Because then you would be like Simon. You would go around deceiving people. Oh, I've been in churches when people start sputtering in tongues. And I know, I know it's not the Holy Ghost. I remember one time in North Carolina when this young preacher was preached. And he was laying hands on people. And they were falling all over the church. And everybody's like, oh, oh. 
But do you know after that revival, that young preacher that was laying hands on people, they caught him in an adult bookstore looking at pornographic movies in an adult bookstore. That same preacher, he was defiled and dirty. Wake up, people. God's trying to wake some people up so you can get it right before you die so you can make heaven your home. If you don't, you ain't going. Verse 17, Acts 8 and 17, talking about Peter and John. And then laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon, the sorcerer, saw, verse 18, that through the laying on of the hand of the apostles' hands, not everybody, the apostles. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, listen, <clears throat> he offered them money. He wanted to buy what they had. I've got news for you, beloved. It ain't for sale. It ain't for sale. I'm going to say it one more time. The laying on of hands of people to receive the Holy Ghost is not for sale. It can't be bought. And here's what Simon said in verse 19, saying... Give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. I want to be able to do that. I want to be able to lay hands on people. I want to be looked at as a great man of God in the churches, in the buildings, wherever people come uh, to worship. I want them to look at me like I look at Peter and John with the power of the Holy Ghost. I'll give you money for it. That was Simon. Simon. He thought he could buy it. But I want you to listen to what Peter says to Simon. He's going to say it to some of y'all one of these days. Listen in Acts chapter 8 and verse 21. No, verse 20. I'll back up one. <clears throat> Peter talking here. Talking to Simon, the sorcerer. But Peter said unto him, listen, thy money perish with thee. Thy money is going to perish just like you are. Your money and all your possessions and all your titles and all your certificates uh, you've got on the wall to impress people. It don't impress God. Never a bit because it's man-made and earned through men. Thy money perish with thee because thou hast thought the gift of God may be purchased with money. If you think for one minute that you can buy your way into heaven by paying for the piano at the church, by donating the money for a stained glass window, as one man gave me heartache in Raleigh, North Carolina, because his family bought the pew on which his mama sat, and you ain't going to sell this church and move out to a better location. Let me ask you a question. Do you attend one of them buildings where they got the names of the people on the pews, on the stained glass windows, and they got the names of the people on the parts of the church because... They donated the money and they think they're going to win favor with God because they bought something for the church, a building that's not even a church. When's the last time you invested in poor folks? Jesus said, when you lend to the poor, you lend it to me and I will repay you. Some of you are so self-righteous. Eat up with yourself. You've given large sums of money to buildings for brick, mortar, stained glass, carpet, padded pews, air conditioning, paved parking lots, and oh my goodness, these new total living centers where they can eat and play ball. What have you done for the poor? What have you done for the needy? What have you done for the homeless? 
What have you done for the orphans? What have you done for the true widows? How many ladies have you helped whose husbands unexpectedly died? How many children have you helped since their mom and dad died? And you think you're building treasures in heavens because you're helping to build a, a building on earth? Peter said, Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Verse 21. And in 20, he said, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought the gift of God may be purchased with money. But look at 21. Thou hast neither part, listen, thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. You believe and you've been baptized, but your heart is still not right in the eyes of God. Let me ask you today, have you been deceived by the works of men, by the gold and silver provided by men and not the works of God? I'm telling you, you can believe, you can be baptized, your name can be on the church roll and you're on your way to hell because your heart is not right before God. <laughs> Deceived. Did the Bible not tell you, warn you that in the last days there would be many false prophets Many would be deceived. Have you been deceived? That's why I'm preaching today like I am. You better wake up, repent, and get right. Because here's what it says. He says, repent, Peter tells Simon. Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness. Believed and baptized. Repent of your wickedness and pray, God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. You better repent and pray that God, who looks at you like you are, will have mercy on your wretched soul and forgive you. That's what Peter told Simon. That the people thought he was a great man of God. Listen to what Peter says, and I close with verse 23. Acts 8 and 23. Here's what Peter tells Simon. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Simon, you're eat up with yourself. You're bound in bondage to your own iniquities. Behold, saith the Lamb of God, you have not much time as the word has been presented to you today to repent of your wickedness. Repent, I say, repent. Ask me to forgive you. And if you mean it, I will. As you have heard, I delight not in the death of the wicked. I don't want to see my creation burn in hell, let alone be cast into the lake of fire. <laughs> I died for you. I went to the cross and shed my blood for you. They pierced my hands and feet with nails for you. What 
are you willing to suffer for me? For my glory? For the souls of others as well as your own self? As it is written, if a man should gain the whole world and lose his own soul, what has it profited him? Let me ask you something today. What can you take with you when you die that you have accumulated since the day you were born? What can you take with you? I'm telling you today, nothing. You can take none of it. Your houses, your land, your gold, your silver, nor your certificates. They mean nothing to me. I want your heart. I want your soul. And those that are willing to deny themselves and give me all shall be with me in my house forever. <laughs> saith the Lord of hosts, only those who are ready when I come, saith the Lord.